श्री सच्चिदानंद सदगुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय रमण महर्षि हिज लाइफ चैप्टर 18 द एसेंशियल फीचर्स ऑफ द टीचिंग ऑफ श्री रमण महर्षि द सेल्फ द सोल रियलिटी एवर एग्जिस्टेंट फॉर्मलेस पावर टॉट ऑफ योर बाय द फर्स्ट ऑफ टीचर्स दक्षिणामूर्ति एज एवर थ्रू अनब्रोकन साइलेंस द प्राइमल साउंड अक्षरा हु कैन रिवील इट इन वर्ड्स This chapter is only an introduction to Sri Ramana's teachings. For a deeper understanding, it is recommended that the reader study the works written by and about him, such as the collected works, the talks, Maharshi's Gospel, "Be as you are," and the other collection of talks as given in the bibliography. The path of self inquiry. Although Sri Ramana Maharshi was a spiritual master of the highest order. this teaching contains nothing which is new of itself it belongs to the tradition of the hindu advaita vedanta in which he found his own experience explained and interpreted vedanta means literally end of the vedas and is a school of philosophy in hinduism which finds its profoundest expression in the upanishads vedanta and advaita are often used synonymously or in conjunction One of the principal exponents of Advaita Vedanta was Shankara, who lived in the eighth century AD. The fundamental teaching of Advaita, which literally means non-duality, is that the absolute is not two but only one. All manifestations or appearances within this one reality, Atman, the divine within the human being, is identical with the Brahman, the basis or the source of universe, the absolute. separate from this one reality nothing exists there is no separate world no separate god and no separate individual ego all is contained in the brahman in the brahman the feeling of being a separate independent individual is the essential problem of the human condition but how does this feeling of individuality arise at all sri ramana explains that individuality is nothing more than a thought or the idea the i thought i am is the first thought which arises from the heart center having arisen it identifies itself with the body its actions and perceptions the term body must be understood here in its fullest essence as a result fullest sense as a result various thoughts and emotions arise which veil one's true identity an individual subject sees itself as being separate from the countless objects and an objective world this individual i now not only says about itself i am but further describes itself by saying i am this or that or and i am doing this and that liberation according to sri ramana is found by reversing this process through self inquiry atma vichara one must as it were go back the way one came He recommends asking oneself the question, "Who am I?" The I in this quest being the first I thought, the I feeling on which all other thoughts and emotions are based. If one is able to keep one's attention on this pure I consciousness, all other thoughts will be eliminated. Identification of the I thought with the multitude of thoughts and objects will cease as concentration on the I thought severs this connection. in this way objects disappear as objects thoughts dissolve and finally even the first i thought disappears the true self is revealed in its place the mind sinks back into the spiritual heart whence it arose the power of the self draws it back to the place of its origin and finally totally destroys it so that it can no longer arise only the self remains the ego is destroyed forever this is what known as self realization Henceforth, everything is experienced as the one self. The experience of the jnani who has reached this final goal is described as satchitananda, being consciousness bliss. Sri Ramana explains this search for the self as follows: You are the mind, or think that you are the mind. The mind is nothing but thoughts. Now, behind every particular thought, there is a general thought which is the I, that is yourself. let us call this i the first thought stick to this i thought and question it to find out what is it when this question takes strong hold on you you cannot think of other thoughts what happens when you make a serious quest for the self is that the i thought as a thought disappears something else from the depth takes hold of you and that is not the i which commences the quest 
that is the real self the import of i it is not the ego it is the supreme being itself taken from sadarshan bhashya part 3 and in his booklet who am i nanyar it says that the enquiry at first may also be a mental process but with continued practice it destroys all thoughts and at last itself by the enquiry who am i the thought who am i will destroy all other thoughts and like the stick used for stirring the burning fire it itself in the end get destroyed then there will arise self realization taken from collected works page 42 in this way the i thought the feeling of being a separate personality will be dissolved a visitor once asked how are these thoughts to be ended ramana replied find out their basis all of them are strung on a single i thought quell it all the others are quashed when the visitor asked further how to quell the i thoughts the answer was if its source is sought it does not arise and thus it is quelled taken from talks page 345 from talk 379 and when being asked what is the means for constantly holding on to the thought who am i shri ramana explains in a very precise terms when other thoughts arise one should not pursue them but should inquire to whom did they arise it does not matter how many thoughts arise as each thought arises one should inquire with diligence to whom has his has this thought arisen and when being asked what is the means for constantly holding on to the thought who am i sri ramana explains in a very precise terms when thoughts when other thoughts arise one should not pursue them but should inquire to whom did they arise it does not matter how many thoughts arise as each thought arises one should inquire with diligence to whom has his has this thought arisen the answer that would emerge would be to me thereupon if one inquires who am i the mind will go back to its source and the thought that arose will become quiescent with repeated practice in this manner the mind will develop the skill to stay in its source when the mind that is subtle goes out through the brain and the sense organs the gross names and forms appear when it stays in the heart the names and forms of disappear not letting the mind go out but retaining it in the heart is what is called inwardness antarmukha letting the mind go out of the heart is known as externalization bahirmukha thus when the mind stays in the heart the i which is the source of all thoughts will go and the self which ever exists will shine whatever one does one should do without the egoity i if one acts in that way all will appear as the nature of shiva god taken from collected works page 42 ff from who am i the seeker has to practice this turning back continuously sri ramana made no secret of the fact that it could be a lengthy struggle when shiva prakasham pillai questioned him how long should inquiry be practiced he answered as long as there are impressions of objects in the mind the inquiry who am i is required as thoughts arise they should be destroyed then and there in the very place of their origin through inquiry if one resorted to the contemplation of the self unintermittently until the self was gained that alone would do as long as there are enemies within the fortress they will continue to sally forth if they are destroyed as they emerge the fortress will fall into our hands taken from collected works page 45 and at another time he explained abhyasa practice consists consists in withdrawal within the self every time you are disturbed by the thoughts it is not concentration or destruction of the mind but withdrawal into the self taken from talks page 464 from talk 485 but what remains when the ego is dissolved shri ramana people are afraid that when ego or mind is killed the result may be a mere blank and not happiness what really happens is that the thinker the object of thought and thinking all much in the one source which is consciousness and bliss itself and thus that state is neither inert nor blank I don't understand why people should be afraid of that state in which all thoughts cease to exist 
and the mind is killed they are every day experiencing that state in the sleep there is no mind or thought in sleep yet when one rises from sleep one says i slept happily taken from mudaliyar day by day page 65 the maharshi stressed that the so called self realization is neither a spectacular happening nor something new to be gained what is self realization a mere phrase people expect some miracle to happen something to drop from heaven in a flash it is nothing of that sort only the notion that you are the body that you are this or that will go and you remain as you are indeed realization is but another name for the self taken from subramanya reminiscences page 138 and elsewhere he says it is called to speak of realization what is there to realize the real is as it is ever how to realize it all that is required is this we have realized the unreal that is regarded as real what is unreal we have to give up this attitude that is all that is required for us to attain gnana taken from mudaliyar day by day page 88 he also describes realization of the self as follows in a pinhole camera when the hole is small you see shapes and colors when the hole is made big the images disappear and one sees only clear light similarly when the mind is small and narrow it is full of shapes and words when it broadens it sees pure light when the box is destroyed altogether only the right light remains taken from tales of bhagavan in ramana smriti page 95 Although Sri Ramana supported all spiritual paths he untiringly and expressly recommended self inquiry as the most effective path in which all other paths finally merge he constantly advised seekers to ask themselves the question who am i when a confessed atheist provocatively asked him is there god can you prove the existence of god he smiled and replied why worry about god let him worry about himself find out who raises the question the atheist was puzzled sri ramana recommended the recommended that he read the book who am i the visitor who only wanted to stay for a few hours ended up staying for several days finally he said bhagavan when i came here as an atheist denying god i was happy but now after asking myself the question who am i i am thoroughly confused I feel I have deteriorated therefore I am very unhappy Sri Ramana smiled at him and said your confusion is not a state of deterioration all these days you have been indifferent to the truth behind your own existence now you have raised the fundamental question thereby you have moved away from indifference so it is only an improvement from indifference to confusion from confusion to clarity from intellectual clarity to experience and from experience to evidence in the self this is the order of ascendancy in spiritual sadhana taken from purushottam ramana page 10 the spiritual heart sri ramana like to speak about the heart hridayam as the place of the spiritual experience the heart referred to is not the physical heart but the spiritual heart which is on the right side two finger widths to the right of the middle of the chest there dwells the experience of one's true identity this can be demonstrated in everyday experience by the fact that people intuitively point to this spot when pointing to themselves the i thought arises here hridayam hrit plus i am this that this is the center it is that from which thoughts arise on which they subsist and where they are resolved the thoughts are the content of the mind and they shape the universe the heart is the center of all taken from talks page 92 from talk 97 the teaching about the spiritual heart did not originate with sri ramana himself he found it and adopted it as it corresponded to his own experience in the mahanarayana upanishad which is one of the sacred hindu scriptures it says it must be understood that the heart resembling the lotus a span below the throat and a span above the navel hangs upside down and is the chief seat of the universal form of paramatman 
Translation translated in Sadhu Arunachala Reminiscences, page 97. Sri Ramana's teachings about the heart is found in particular in the famous verse included in Ganapati Muni's Ramana Gita and which has already been quoted in chapter 8 as In the interior of the heart cave, Brahman, Brahman alone shines in the form of the Atman which with the direct immediacy as I, as I enter into the heart with questioning mind or by diving deep within or through control of the breath and abide in the Atman. The Sanskrit verse starts with Hrudriya Kohara Madhye in the interior of the heart cave. The sacred Hindu scriptures stress that the Brahman shines in the heart of all living beings. Sri Ramana takes up this statement and develops it in more detail. In the cave of the heart, that is, in its inmost center, Atman, which is identical with Brahman, is experienced as I. 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 I means continuous self-consciousness, self-awareness, which is in each person's immediate experience and which cannot be doubted even in deep sleep. I. I is the true. I or the self which was already there is eternal and never changing. The individual I, the changeable and the stead, unsteady ego has its source here. If the I thought is tracked back to its origin and merges there, it finally comes to an end there forever and this is self-realization. In this verse, three paths are mentioned by which one can enter the heart. One can enter the heart. The path of self-inquiry, the path of diving deep and the path of breath control. Sri Ramana's teaching concentrates mainly on self-inquiry. Diving deep is explained by the example of the pearl diver, which Ramana gives in Nanyar, saying that just as the pearl diver ties a stone around his waist, holds his breath and concentrates one-pointedly on his single goal, which is to dive into the sea, in order to find the precious pearl, likewise the seeker, the seeker should dive into the heart. The path of breath control does not diff does not refer to pranayama as practiced in Hatha Yoga but simply to watching the breath as is practiced in some form of Zen meditation as mind and breath have the same root as Ramana repeatedly stressed if the breath is watched it comes to rest. Whatever means one uses the important thing is the goal which is to reach the heart and remain there forever to be it in the heart the self-inquiry finds its end. It dissolves in the realization of the heart. As Sri Ramana once said, what is finally realized as a result of such inquiry into the source of Aham Vritti, I thought, is verily the heart as the undifferentiated light of pure consciousness into which the reflected light of mind is completely absorbed. Taken from Maharshi's Gospel, page 83, about the spiritual heart, see also in the same book, part 2, chapters 4 and 5. In the deepest meaning, the spiritual heart is identical with self, Atman, God and Guru and in the final analysis not restricted to any particular spot in the body. To a question from a disciple about the meaning of the heart, Sri Ramana answered, call it by name, call it by any name, God, self, the heart or the seat of consciousness, it is all the same. The point to be grasped is this, that heart means the very core of one's being, the center, without which there is nothing, whatever. Taken from Maharshi's Gospel, page 66. And elsewhere, heart is not physical. Meditation should not be on the right or the left. Meditation should be on the self. Everyone knows I am. Who is the I? It will be neither within nor without, neither on the light, neither on the right nor on the left. I am, that is all, taken from talks, page 229, from talk 273. Teaching through silence. Sri Ramana was and is first and foremost a master who teaches through silence. His deepest teaching is found neither in his spoken answers to seekers, nor in his written works, but in his powerful silence, because the truth transcends all words. His method of teaching is often compared to that of Dakshinamurti, who is the young Shiva seated under, a seated under a banyan tree. At his feet are his four disciples, 
whom he taught through silence only he is seen as the guru of all gurus and represents the ascetic poet of shiva his statue can be found in every temple in southern indian one evening devotees asked shri ramana to explain the meaning of shankara's hymn in praise of dakshina murti dakshina murti stotram they waited for its answer but in vain the maharshi sat motionless on his seat in total silence the intense power and peace of his presence enveloped all those present to such a degree that they sat through the night without any of them noticing the passage of time in this way eight hours passed by when finally ramana stood up to go for his morning walk the others became aware for the first time that it was now morning for whole night he had been commenting upon the meaning of shankara's verses by his example the next day he said to his devotees true silence means abiding in the self on another occasion he explained dakshina murti that is the great shiva himself could not express the truth the one reality except by silence but that silence could not be understood except by that very advanced the others have to be told taken from mudaliyar day by day page 22 how powerful shri ramana's silence was is illustrated by the following episode with the cook which the cook shantamma has recorded for us one morning a european came in a horse carriage to the ashram and went straight to bhagavan he wrote something on a piece of paper and showed it to bhagavan bhagavan did not answer instead he gazed at the stranger with unwinking eyes the stranger was staring back at him then bhagavan closed his eyes and stranger also closed his they stayed without moving at meal time the meals were served but bhagwan would not open his eyes madhav swami the attendant got bhagwan's water pot and stood ready to lead bhagwan out of the hall bhagwan would not stir we felt afraid to go near such was the intensity around him his face was glowing with a strange light the guests in the dining hall were waiting and the food before them was getting cold chinna swami was talking loudly to attract bhagwan's attention even vessels were banged about but all in vain when the clock was striking 12 bhagwan opened his eyes they were glowing very brightly madhav swami took up the water jug the european got into the carriage and went away it was the last we saw of him we did not even get his name taken from shantamma eternal bhagwan in pramana smriti page 83 observing the moon before rising sun shri bhagavan remarked see the moon and also the cloud in the sky there is no difference in their brilliance the moon looks only like a speck of cloud the gnani's mind is like this moon before sunlight the gnani's mind is like this moon before sunlight it is there but not shining itself taken from talk 460 jai ramana jai sai